Doctor Strange, Captain America, Iron Man, what do they all have in common? MCU characters that I'm about to analyze for their medical accuracy. Be whoop! That's clearly a case of cosmonautosis, where uh, the cosmos actually penetrates your skin. I think that was legally your fault. Get the first aid kit. Do me a favor and don't be dead. <gasps> Does he need CPR? Because I totally know CPR. Thank you for offering to do chest compressions, but a person who is awake and alert does not need CPR because their heart is beating. Otherwise, they will not be functioning. You, what realm is this? Alfheim? Dornheim? New Mexico? You dare threaten me, Thor, with so puny a weapon? Oh. That's a taser. Everything in your body is essentially an electric process. And when you get zapped with 50,000 volts, you essentially lose control of all of those processes. Therefore, you collapse. Hi. Just taking a little blood. How dare you attack the son of Odin? I need some help. I need help. Ah. Oh, I don't want to get hit by Thor. Ah. See, if I was in there, I would be boxing him. Yo, I got you, son. You are no match for the mighty. That looks like they gave him a short acting benzodiazepine, probably. Sometimes we used to do promethazine and haloperidol, but the benzos seem to work a little faster and better. Ladies and gentlemen, today we take not another step towards annihilation, but the first step on the path to peace. We begin with a series of micro-injections into the subject's major muscle groups. The serum infusion will cause immediate cellular change. I mean, the reason we do all our injections, well, not all our injections, so we do some underneath the skin layer, but we also do intramuscular injections for things that need to be rapidly absorbed. To stimulate growth, the subject will be saturated is vital is. I hope it's clear that this is fantasy. There's no thing that you can inject into muscles and just make them explode. The only thing that is somewhat similar to this is synthol, which is an oil that I talked about in the past that some TikTokers use to make their muscles appear really big, but they're not functionally big, meaning they're not stronger by any means. And that's a huge amount of serum to inject into each of his little muscles. Like he's gonna be edematous, if anything. If you only knew how many times I looked up this image of his body in his workout so I can get his pecs, because I was obsessed with this look. Like, this is my dream body right here. Like, damn you, Chris. <laughs> Even the haircut's fire. Whoa. That's a bomb, baby! Damage to his tympanic membrane is definitely a happening. The explosion's so close to you, like, ow. Oh, and he's bleeding. That's not a good area to bleed from, because that's where the heart is. <laughs> Who's performing surgery with a patient awake? That's just torture. Did they chloroform him? That's so evil. And the only reason I say it's evil is because like chloroforming someone by allowing them to inhale it by putting a, a napkin over it that's doused in it, it's not uniform. You don't know how much dose you're giving. You don't know how long they're gonna be knocked out for. It's my worst fear waking up in the middle of a surgery. I think that's everyone's worst fear. We just don't think about it often. That's an NG tube. Not sure why he has an NG tube. An NG tube is a nasogastric tube that runs from your nose into your stomach to either pull fluids out or it's to feed him because he can't eat on his own. <laughs> it does come out like that, so that is accurate. Just kind of gross watching it. And this is where the medical accuracy ends. Fantasy begins. What I did is to save your life. I removed all the shrapnel I could. 
there's a lot left and it's headed into your atrial septum. The atrial septum is essentially the separation between the, the two top components of the heart. Now, if there's shrapnel there, if it's not causing a problem, I guess you could leave it, but I don't understand how it can enter into the septum and not cause severe bleeding in the heart between the atria or at least out of the atria into the pericardial space. What is this? That is an electromagnet hooked up to a car battery and it's keeping the shrapnel from entering your heart. Basically what he's saying is he's trying to keep the piece of metal shrapnel inside the actual meat of the organ as opposed to the circulation part of the organ so it doesn't get shot out into the general circulation and end up doing more damage. Like if it starts going into the brain, that's lethal. Oh my God, is that the thing that's keeping you alive? It was, it is now an antique. This is what will be keeping me alive for the foreseeable future. I'm swapping it out for an upgraded unit. I don't know what that monitor is showing behind it. Is it safe? Yeah, it should be fine. It's like operation. You just don't let it touch the socket wall well, or it goes beep. What do you mean operation? It's just a game. Never mind. Great game. Okay. Great. Maybe take your ring off first. You know, I, 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 I don't think that I'm qualified to do that. Yet you feel qualified to give very inaccurate advice on goop.com. Very interesting. What is it? GSW. GSW means gunshot wound. I don't know why we say GSW when it's actually more syllables than gunshot wound. It's impinging on the medulla. I needed a specialist, Nick diagnosed brain death. Something about that doesn't feel right to me. We have to run. A bullet in the brainstem is dangerous for so many reasons, mostly because the brainstem controls your respiratory rate, your heart rate, all these autonomic functions. If they're not active, you can't just think, heartbeat, heartbeat, breathe in, heartbeat, heartbeat, breathe in, stomach work. If they didn't happen automatically, you'd die. We need to get a prep for a suboccipital craniotomy. Not gonna let you operate on a dead man. What do you see? A bullet? A perfect bullet. It's been hardened. You harden a bullet by alloying lead with antimony. Toxic metal. And that's leached directly into the cerebral spinal fluid. Rapid onset central nervous system shutdown. You gotta go. He's basically saying some kind of metal from the bullet is impacting his central nervous system. Therefore, he's not really dead. He's acting like he's brain dead. And he's gonna save his life by removing the bullet by doing a radical procedure. Only in a Marvel movie. Cranial nerves intact. Those look like alligator forceps. I love using those to get earwax out of patients' ears, especially when it's like hard and you could go in there and just like grab it. Mm, so satisfying. Okay, okay, this is really funny. This is really, really funny. And I'm not a surgeon, I've never worn this device. But looking at this image, the things he's wearing on his glasses to get a better view, are they not covering his field of vision? And then the actual lenses are lower than his eyes? <laughs> Oh my God, he can't see through those. You sent me the, got it. Who wants a surgeon that is getting pictures of patient records on their Lamborghini and then crashing their car? Looks like he has a lot of fractures in his hands requiring some kind of orthopedic device with pins and needles. I've never seen it on the outside like this. This is very exaggerated. But remember, the bones in the hand are quite small. The carpals are very small. So putting in pins is not always a simple process, especially the big size pins that they have there. It's gonna take a lot of physical therapy, so shout out to physical therapists, but also occupational therapists as well. Because when it comes to rehabbing the hands, you gotta think about fine motor control, especially for him as a surgeon. Show me your strength. This is him getting that therapy I was just talking about. <sighs> Useless. If the patient is struggling this much, we have to decrease the intensity of whatever therapy we're doing. It's about be allowing them to do it successfully several times and then increasing that intensity as time goes on. Have you ever known anyone with nerve damage this severe to do this and actually recover? One guy, yeah. Factory accident, broke his back, paralyzed. His leg wasted away. He came in three times a week. A few years later, he walked past me on the street. Walked? Yeah, walked. 
Show me his file. It take me a while to pull the files from the archive. You can't just show people patient records. Come on, guy, HIPAA. But if it proves your arrogant ass wrong. He is an arrogant ass. And as a surgeon, like Dr. Strange, you should know that people recover from severe strokes, traumas, tumors, and regain neurological function. The progress that patients make under the care of PMNR, physical medicine and rehabilitation physicians, is truly magical. It goes to show that the human body has an amazing capacity to heal itself. That's the principle of osteopathic medicine that we live by. And it's not because I love that principle, it's because it's true. <sighs> Christine! <sighs> Steven? Uh, oh my God. You're what? giving me an operating theater now. Just you. Now I haven't any time. You can't just run into a hospital and request an operating theater. What happened? Stabbed. Cardiac tamponade. How does he know he has cardiac tamponade? If you've been stabbed, you can actually die from cardiac tamponade. But how he knows that without doing an echo, listening for heart sounds and all this other stuff, I have no idea. The chest cavity's clear. I don't know what she just did to know that the chest cavity is clear. She went. Okay, this is uh, the non-medically accurate part of the show. <laughs> if someone has a pneumothorax where their lung collapses and you're sure of it, you could put a needle into the second intercostal space, which will allow you to allow that air to come out, normalizing the pressure, allowing the lung to re-expand. Whoa, we don't do it like that, bro. Can you imagine if we just like are like, okay, I'm putting it in. And you have to make sure you're palpating the area as you do it. You're not just like stabbing randomly from far away. Like by holding it from so far away, you have very little control of where you're actually putting the needle. Okay, he's flatlining. If she takes out the paddles, I will scream. She's taking out the paddles! Stop charging them! You don't shock a systole! Chest compressions, chest compressions, chest compressions. Clearly they need this. This is the Chest Compressions University merch. Two inches deep, 100 per minute. Please do chest compressions when someone's heart stops, not run to shock them. You can also buy this merch down below. Here's the truth about your underwear. Click here to check that out. As always, stay happy and healthy. But is your underwear healthy? Click here to check that out.